One of the biggest questions to come out of Black Panther Wakanda forever is when the heck are we going to see Namor again? Also, is this going anywhere? Is this story going anywhere? Well, it turns out the answer to both questions is one and the same. And that's that the Vibranium War is coming. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. And of course, Namor is sitting on a big chunk of Vibranium. So he's going to be a part of that for sure. Uh, remember how at the end of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Namor says that the world will come for Wakanda's vibranium and Wakanda will have no choice but to reach out to Talokan as their only ally because they're in the same boat? Well, that day is coming sooner than uh, anyone thought, Namor, Shuri, or us, because I heard Captain America, New World Order, and Thunderbolt, Thunderbolts are all about getting some vibranium. You know, they were really jonesing for it in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Turns out, they are, they're not giving up on it. Although I presume where Claw is like, you guys are all a bunch of hypocrites. And Killmonger is like, told ya, told ya. Uh, so, but wait a minute, isn't Captain America New World Order about creating multiple hulks? Well, yes, it still is, but it's also about going after Vibranium. Maybe Val, who it's recently been reported is also gonna appear in Captain America New World Order, decides to send in some hulks to get Vibranium. But why would President Ross be turned into a hulk? Seems kind of ridiculous until you think about the current political landscape and then it seems less ridiculous. Also, we're talking about a world where they grafted Captain America's shield onto the Statue of Liberty. So it works. And take all this with a grain of salt because I hear, you know, these scripts are still fluid. So these things could change blade style. Now, right now, but right now, it's hulks and vibranium. That sounds pretty good to me. Which means Wakanda and Talokan are on defense, and both countries feel that the best defense is a strong offense. This could be good. And I guess the vibranium war turns into a cold war after New World Order, uh, as the Thunderbolts seem to be, you know, going after it next, as I said. Will they break into Wakanda and or Talokan? That seems aggressive, very aggressive. If that was the mission parameters, I'd be like, what now? I mean, these, these characters are all supposed to be like, you know, it's supposed to be the Suicide Squad for Marvel and these characters are all kind of on the line. But I mean, whoa, I'd be like, you want me to go pick a fight with the Black Panther and Namor? <laughs> You know, this, but you know, Val better have quite the bonus package for the, uh, everyone involved there. But I think it's very interesting. And again, I think that somewhere, Claw and Killmonger, they're like on the ancestral plane. That would be funny. They could be like Statler and Waldorf narrating this whole thing. I think that would be hilarious, actually. I'm sure Killmonger's like, get me back in there. Is there a way to maybe get them back in there? Maybe variants. Maybe variants. How could they not be part of the Vibranium War? That makes very little sense to me. All right, so anyway. Now, what about the Fantastic Four? Namor has always been wrapped up heavily with that team, but word is, is that the MCU's Fantastic Four will indeed be a Mad Men-esque period piece. I have conflicting thoughts on that, and I think Peyton Reed is 100%, are you kidding me, on that news, because that was his pitch. But Matt Shackman getting the gig after WandaVision makes even more sense if that, if that does turn out to be the case, if they do go with that. But since Namor is centuries old, he's been around, you know, for a very, very long time. He could still swim into the 1960s uh, and, you know, be in a Fantastic Four movie. But how could the Fantastic Four be in the current MCU? They're not immortal. Only Feige knows how he's going to fix that. The Quantum Realm? But Janet aged up when she was in the Quantum Realm. So uh, this seems difficult. <laughs> All right, now, based on the comics, these are some other storylines that Namor could find himself wrapped up in. He was a member of the Illuminati, teased and sort of wasted in Multiverse of Madness, and as the first mutant, which Black Panther Wakanda Forever confirmed is also the case in the MCU, the X-Men have often called him up and said, hey man, are you going to support your people or what? And he does it really begrudgingly, and he only sticks around for as long as he feels like it. But he's there. He's there. Also in the comics, speaking of the X-Men, Namor has a thing for blondes. Now, I don't know how that would play with today's audiences, and after I think he flirted, you know, I thought there was a, a little bit of romantic spark with Shuri, so I don't know if, you know, the MCU wants to do that, but it would be comics accurate. Uh, Namor was also a founding member of the Defenders, Doctor Strange's long-running team. Uh, and by the way, the Hulk was the third founding member of that team. So in that case, Namor was with, working with the Hulks. Although, you know, maybe the good Hulks aren't part of, you know, they aren't going to invade Wakanda and Talokan. Maybe that's why they need evil Hulks to do that. 
Uh, although all the Hulks end up kind of being like, you know, anti-heroes. Now, speaking of anti-heroes, like Loki, Namor can swim back and forth between the heroes and villains groups, often aligning himself with whichever side best fits with his interests at the time. Namor always does what's best for Namor, and that's one of the great things about the depiction in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That's what he was like there, too. Now, in this latest movie, he was a fantastic, fantastic complex villain, which was so refreshing to see, and also he wasn't killed off, a rarity for MCU villains. Are we entering the age of effective MCU villains that stick around? That would be delightful with Kang already here uh, and, you know, his, his role rapidly expanding. Very excited about that. Mephisto finally arriving soon. And then maybe, maybe still Doom. I think it would be weird to do Secret Wars without Doom. So he's got to be showing up pretty soon. Uh, maybe he's responsible for the Fantastic Four being able to jump from, you know, the 60s to today. We'll see. It would be great to get a good group of villains going to do fun villain-centric storylines like Dark Reign. And on that note, can we get an MCU Norman Osborn as well with the new uh, Tom Holland movies that should be coming up soon? That would be fantastic. And don't forget, Reed Richards often takes on villainous characteristics as well, especially when Namor flirts with his wife. I kid, I kid. I'm sure that upsets him. But, you know, Reed Richards is a, a really wonderful character in that, you know, he's not good or bad because he's, he's, a, he's a, um, he has no moral or ethical code. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really fascinating for him to be the leader of like the, uh, the first family of Marvel. And that's the kind of character that he is. All right. Anyway, that's, the, that's, the, that's what's potentially up next for Na uh, Namor in the MCU. How does it sound to you? What are you excited about? What do you hope to see? What do you think of a vibranium war? You guys want some direction in the MCU. That's a clear direction that I think is actually quite good. So share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.